Hi, Nightworms. I'm Caroline Kepnes, and I am the author of You, Hidden Bodies, You Love Me, and Providence. So Providence is a standalone, and the other books are part of the You series. You might be familiar with the narrator, Joe Goldberg. He is a passionate reader of books as well as people. He is that person, you know, when you're out in the world and you feel like someone's looking at you and maybe judging you a little bit, that's him, except in these, in this story, he goes the, what he considers to be the extra mile. When he thinks that something, someone has done something terrible and unforgivable, he is not opposed to ending their life so that others may live. It's a whole rationalization game in his head, and it is very fun for me to play on the page, and I'm going to give you a little taste of chapter eight and tell you a little about You Love Me. Um, real quick, he thought he was going to be a dad when we left him off in the last book. He thought he had the, met the woman of his life. Things did not work out like that. He's free on the one hand, but are you really free if you're not allowed to raise your own child and you've been forced to leave that child? Well, he's trying to make the most of things, which is something that... I like about him as a character. He is on Bainbridge Island, volunteering at the library, and if you know Joe, you won't be surprised that there is a librarian who has caught his eye. A super cool mom who's a little older than him, and just as much of a reader, and she is the mother of this teenage girl who's her own person. Joe is very impressed by all of this crazy about her. So we're going to find him in chapter 8, where it's about time for one of their their big first date as a family. Now what this means for Joe is that he did a little homework and found out that she and her daughter are headed to Seattle. So Joe being Joe, he is headed there too. This is chapter eight of You Love Me. I know life is ugly. I, I mean, I, I know that Bainbridge Island was never going to be exactly like Cedar Cove. I'm waiting to board the ferry and this guy in line in front of me is wearing a knit fucking skull cap. Someone made it for him, you can just tell and yellow-framed sunglasses, and he's rubbing his son in my face, a lesser 40 with a runny nose. He's also with his wife, the one who knit that stupid skull cap and lied to him, told him he can pull off yellow shades. Uh -uh. She's a puffy jacket sourpuss, and she sniffs her coffee. I think this is oat milk, babe. And I am alone, and they are together, and it is absurd, but not for long, right? Right. I am taking the 10 a.m. ferry to Seattle to get there before you, and I'm a little pushy, gently, Joseph. But I want to escape from the in-your-face family that isn't mine, so I move to the left side of the boarding throng into a pack of lawsuit-hungry retired lawyers just fucking hoping that someone else's landscaper mows their lawn because it would give them a project. <laughs> yeah, it's twee here. If you go to the police station on your birthday, you get a free donut. You don't even have to show ID. But there are 25,000 nice residents eating locally farmed beets and commuting to Seattle, forming little commuter clips. Clicks. Debbie Macomer would feel for me, alone on a Saturday, now marooned with techies talking soccer. I belong nowhere, but this is temporary and I'm on board. That's progress. And I put on my headphones and break left for the stairs, two at a time, up to the sun deck. The air helps. The sea, too. A far cry from that heady brown Malibu foam. And I sit on the bench and I'm faced with a wall clock covered by a sign that reads, I am broken. I find another place to sit. Gotta be positive because it's a big day for us, Mary Kay. I'm not going to interrupt your bonding with your daughter, and I'm not stalking you. My plan is simple. I'll have some me time, and you'll have some family time, and I'll watch for the signs. When I notice that the two of you are getting sick of each other, I'll bump into you. Joe, what a nice surprise. And we'll ride back to the island together. Then we'll have dinner at my house. I bought salmon steaks, and they're not fucking frostbitten like yours. Thanksgiving is five days away, and that's plenty of time for you to cancel your trip to Phoenix, and you'll do that after you realize that you can date me and be a good mom at the same time. I walk toward the bow to another bank of benches, and I zip up my jacket. It's not freezing, but it's not springtime for Hitler, and I take off my headphones because people up here are polite, alone like me. No one is forcing a neighbor to overhear one side of a cell phone conversation about a busy, boring life, and I can't get that clock out of my head. I am broken. I check Love's Instagram. I am nervous. And Forty is biting his n nanny, Tressa, who says that my son reminds her of Adam fucking Levine. And, and Love is laughing. It isn't funny. And there's nothing I can do. I delete the fucking app and shove my phone back in my pocket. But then I freeze. I blink. I wish I could delete my body. Because what the fuck, Mary Kay? You're here. You and Nomi are on this boat. My boat. The one you're supposed to miss. You're 30 feet away, and you're leaning over the railing, and I scoot across the bench, close to the center of the vessel, and I pick up a newspaper and listen to my heart beat between my ears. Calm down, Joe. 
This is like yesterday. If you see me, you see me. I, it's fine. People go to Seattle, and, and I am people. I bend the upper corner of the newspaper, and whoever is driving the ship decides that it's time to go and we're on the move. You pull a fleece out of your hat, your soggy, uh, you pull a fleece out of your saggy, bottomless purse, and you offer it to the meerkat, and she deflects. I can't hear you, but I see you throw your hands up and look heavenward. Help me, Jesus! And the meerkat sulks and stares at the horizon. You two are off to a rough start. And I watched an episode of Gilmore Girls last night. You know, they, they needed Luke at times like this, and maybe I should just walk up to you right now and save your morning. I play it out in my head. Joe, is that you? Wow, Mary Kay, what a surprise. You want to go fuck in the bathroom? I eh, know, too much. And the meerkat might tell you that she told me all about your plans. Think, Joe, think. If you saw me, if you'd come say hi, that's what friends do. I'm still in hiding, and you haven't noticed me yet. Long live print newspapers. And the meerkat leans over the railing. Ugh, she shouts. If you don't leave me alone, I'm going to jump, I swear. You tell her that's not funny, and she tells you to stop being such a worry ward. And this is adorable. I love our family. And then an oaf in a t-shirt stomps up the stairs into the frame. And Nomi, Nomi points at this oaf like she knows him. Look at Dad, she says. He's wearing a t-shirt and shorts, and he's fine. The word Dad is an iceberg, and there is no Dad. Dad is gone. Dad isn't on your Instagram, and Nomi has never said the word dad, and our ship is taking on water, fast. Hey, Phil, you say, husband of the year, will you tell your daughter to put a hat on? Dad has a name, it's Phil, and I am Leo in the ice water. I will freeze to death on this boat in this water. The man you call Phil? Husband? This is not happening. He shushes you, and our ship is, cr is cruising. We are sinking, and he's a rock and roll type of ass, and you are married, buried. No, Mary Kay, no. You don't have a husband, but you do. And this guy isn't husband material, but he is. And he's not Eddie Vedder, and it's not 1997. So why is he sitting there with his feet up, Doc Martens, wiping his slimy hands on his mother love bone t-shirt while he dictates God knows what into his phone? He pecks you on the cheek. And you let him kiss you. And the ballroom on this boat is flooded, and the water is cold, and you touch him, his face. You casually break every bone in my body and pull a sweater from your purse. And he won't take the sweater, and I can't take this. I won't take this. Married. Buried.